Thank you for coming out. I'm a public information officer with the Antioch Police Department. My name is Ashley Crandall. The first name is spelled A-S-H-L-E-Y. Last name is spelled C-R-A-N-D-E-L-L. -L. On November 12th at 5.25 p.m., dispatch re began receiving calls regarding an assault at the Habit Burger Grill located at 2430 Mahogany Way in the city of Antioch. The notes in the call indicated that an employee was assaulted by a customer. Through our investigation, we learned that the victim, the employee, was assaulted after protecting another customer with an intellectual disability. She was punched in the face multiple times, and during that attack, she ended up losing her right eye as a result of it. This is a devastating case, and our investigation bureau worked tirelessly to identify the suspect. This morning, 20-year-old Isaac White Carter of Hayward was arrested in the 25,000 block of Spring Drive in Hayward. He was arrested on an arrest warrant for the felony charges of mayhem and assault causing great bodily injury. He was arrested by the Pacific Southwest Regional Fugitive Task Force with the United States Marshals Service. He was brought to our police station for questioning and once he is booked, we will provide his booking photograph. There are no outstanding suspects. We would also like to thank the Contra Costa County Sheriff's Office for their assistance with identifying Mr. White Carter. Can you get into how you guys are able to identify him? We can't talk about the leads that we received and how we were able to do that, um, but the, the Contra Costa County Sheriff's Office did assist us in that based off of the photograph that we had from the surveillance footage. Were the charges included any assault on the uh, young man, that uh, the, um, the person that the clerk was trying to protect? They were not. Okay. What, what charges is he likely to face? He is facing mayhem and assault causing great bodily injury. How would you characterize, I mean, it sounds pretty vicious, I mean, based on the victim's injuries, how would you characterize how bad this it's devastating. Um, the, the victim is young and she lost her eye as a result to it. That's something that is obviously very serious. The assault is very gruesome. It's on surveillance video um, and it's, it's a very sad case. What started the incident, do you know? The victim was protecting... Um, no, no, I mean, why, did he, why was he trying to injure the... the uh, the other person. I'm not exactly sure he was trying to injure him. I think he was just speaking to him in a manner that was unnecessary to the employee, and she wanted to step in to protect him from, from any of that. What can you share with us about who Isaac, is it Carter White, is that correct? I didn't get the whole name. Yes, Isaac <coughs> White Carter. White Carter, hyphenated last name? Correct. Um, what can you share with us about who this individual is? Does he have prior runs in, run in with the law without getting real specific? And what does he do? Is he a student? Does he work somewhere? We're not going to share any of his prior contacts. Um, as stated, he is out of Hayward. That is where he's from. Um, and he resides. But we are not going to get into any of his prior contacts or criminal history. Were you familiar with him before this case at all? Exactly. Just in general? Uh, yes. We had one prior contact with him. What, what message, I know it took a few weeks and there was a lot out there on social media and, and whatnot. What message does this send to other people, um, you know, who, who think that they can just do whatever they want out there? Does this send a message? I think it sends the message that our detectives, Detective Cox being one of them, are going to work tirelessly until we solve these cases. This is something that's very serious. We never want people to come to our community and feel like they're in danger. So our detectives are going to do everything that they can, along with people that they, or departments that they work with, to, to solve these and, and bring the victim or family as much justice as we can. Was the arrest peaceful? Did he resist? What was it like? Uh, the arrest was peaceful and, and, and quick. Uh, he didn't resist at all. Was it at his home? It was at an address in Hayward that, yeah, at where he resided. Do you know why he was in Antioch at that time? He has, uh, there's a nexus to Antioch. He has friends and family, and he comes out here. Okay. Uh, 
there was you know pictures and video out there. Um, did did you get a lot of you know tips or, or not to be specific or anything like that? But how much of a role did people in the community play uh, in, in helping out here? Uh, there were a lot of people that did want to help out, uh, and there were more than one uh, tip or tips to us uh, that we fielded and and it eventually helped out. Have you had a chance to interview him yet? Yes. Can you share with us what he said? Anything? Uh, I don't want to get into like the specifics of what he said. Uh, he did give a statement, um, essentially placing him at the scene um, and his story of what happened. But that's about all I can tell you. Is he admitting to it? or? <clears throat> He admitted to being there and being involved. Was it with his bare hands or did he have something in his hands that caused the, help to cause the great bodily injury? From the, from the video, it, I didn't get into it in his interview, but from the video it looks like he was just empty handed. I, I know there was talk that maybe he had a ring on. Is, is there a belief that he may have had a ring on? I think maybe that came from uh, the doctors when they were treating the victim, just because they were surprised at the extent of the injury just from a, an empty-handed attack. Uh, but it could have just been that lucky shot with significant force. What comes now? Does he, I mean, is there a court date? Is it, I mean. So he's, being, he's been transported to Martinez Detention Facility. Uh, the case is gonna be sent over to the district attorney's office tomorrow. Uh, a deputy DA will be reviewing it um, and it's up to them on whether or not they file charges. Uh, so that would be something that they would have to talk about. So no, no court date, because it still has to go to the DA. He, yeah, he just got arrested at, uh, I think, around 1030 this morning, so. Are these felony charges or the misdemeanor charges? Uh, the mayhem and, and, and assault with great bodily injury are both felonies. What is anything being done for the <clears throat> victim in this uh, other than maybe a GoFundMe page or is there anything you know that you can share? I honestly don't even really know about the GoFundMe. I just know what's been on social media. I have been in contact with the victim and her family. Uh, I've spoken to her a few times. Um, and she has resources through the uh, Victim of Violent Crimes through the District Attorney's Office. Okay. I take it that you spoke with her already about the arrest. Yes, uh, I called her um, pretty much when I got back to the office with him. What was your uh, she was she was happy and she was grateful. Can this be related as a hate crime? <clears throat> uh, there were statements made, um, alleged statements made during the attack that uh, they're probably going to be reviewed uh, to see if uh, the hate crime charges would apply. But I can't get into specifics. Did the surveillance video also have audio or just other witnesses heard him say things? It's just from witness statements. Okay. There's no audio. Did, did the suspect <clears throat> know anybody inside that restaurant that, that you know? No, they, they, they were actually just ordering food. Okay. If you're talking about possible hate crime charges, are you talking about in relation to the, the child or the, the other person that he was bullying, or are you talking about the, the victim that had her eye? You know, lost her eye. Uh, we're talking about the victim who lost her eye. Um, I haven't explored any. Obviously, the DA is going to review it, or the deputy DA will review it, um, and he'll decide on whether or not there was anything uh, that would be chargeable related to uh, the other person that was there. I don't know if you already said this, but is the suspect over 18, under 18? He's 20 years old. 20. Can you tell us? I am sorry, probably this is uh, a question that uh, it was already asked, but give us a little more details about the arrest and the suspect. So uh, a, an arrest warrant was obtained um, and we requested the assistance of the United States <laughs> Marshal Service to uh, locate and apprehend him. Um, this morning they uh, set up to apprehend him in Hayward um, and once they made a positive ID, uh, they moved in to arrest him. He was outside on foot and uh, he was taken into custody. <coughs> Is it normal procedure to ask the U.S. Marshal for help? Yes, for uh, any fugitive apprehensions, we, we, we try to use them and we have uh, task force officers. So there are any police officers on the fugitive apprehension. So it's you guys in conjunction? Yes.
and how these pain <coughs> tips came from uh, to be able to make this arrest. I'm sorry, I missed the... Uh, if you got like any tips or how did you come to, to make the arrest? Um, we received um, more than one tip uh, to assist us in our investigation. Obviously, the, the more information, the better. The more people saying this is who it is, it is, is significant to us. Um, but we received more than one tip, um, and but the identification came from um, essentially from information from the Contra Costa County Sheriff's Office. Can you describe the suspect? How tall is he? How tall is he? I don't want him to speak, and I don't have that okay. information. Sorry, right, no worries. But you say that it's uh, 20 years old of age. Yes. Any more details about this suspect, like priors or? Um, he, he has, I know he has prior arrests. I'm not sure about any prior convictions. He has one prior contact with us. But Can you get into at all what that prior contact was he with Antioch? It was an arrest, and that's all I feel like I can say. How long ago? Last year, I think. And you don't know what it was for? <clears throat> I do, but I don't know how much I can speak to. Right. Have you released the identity for the suspects? Yes. Uh, his name is Isaac White Parker. Due to a crime against the victim who lost her eye, what, is she Hispanic? Yes. Was the suspect black? Yes. Okay. So you were saying racial slurs against Hispanic people? There's information that. Uh, that there, there's some sort of hate crime element that uh, would obviously have to be explored by an attorney, not, not just me. Okay, but not against women, against his, it was like a race thing? Yes. Okay. Ask you about another case, this issue from Sunday uh, at the uh, convenience store. I guess it was a week ago, Sunday. Convenience store. Um, specifically, the question that comes arise is the victim in that, the clerk, was there any connection between him and the those who committed the robbery, including the one that got shot? Do you know of any connection between them and why he would go after them? Right. We're not gonna, we're not here to speak about any other case. We're specifically talking about the Habit case. Okay. If there is more information to be released on any other case that we are working, we will release that to you guys via a press release. Um, but we're not going to answer any other questions about any other open investigations. Okay. So as for our planning purposes, what time do you anticipate releasing the mugshot? I will get it done within the hour after this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just one question. Are you uh, uh, planning to share any of this information in Spanish? Uh, that we can like I do not speak Spanish, um, nor do I write it. I don't know if we have an officer that can translate for you, but I will get with you after this. Thank you. 